After speaking of the measurements of different line segments, our next order of business is to measure angles. So for starters, what is an angle? An angle is two rays that come together at a common point of intersection and forms an opening. Now, when we start talking about angles, we have different types. From the angle that is shown here in this diagram, we can name this angle many different ways. We begin by naming angles by placing an angle marker. Now, the point of the intersection of the two rays is the most crucial part of the angle. It is in the middle, and when we name it, it needs to be in the middle. So we can begin by naming this simply angle 1. Since it is numbered, as shown here, we can call it by that number. Another option is to call this simply angle B. Because B is at that hinge point, that is the critical part portion. Now, if we start having more angles at one location at a time, for instance, if I were to get rid of angle 1 and cut it this way, placing point D in the middle, angle B no longer becomes valid, neither does angle 1. So we would have to name it by specifically which angle we want. So I can talk about angle A, B, C. Angle A, B, C begins at point A, travels through B, and heads towards C. Another way we could denote an angle here is by saying angle C, B, A. This angle would start at C, head towards B, and then pass off towards A. Angles A, B, C, and C, B, A are the exact same angle, we're just naming them differently. Then we could also, from what was added in, we could talk about angle A, B, D, angle D, B, A, angle D, B, C, and angle C, B, D. You notice in all of these that B is in the middle, and that is simply because B is the turning point of the angle itself. When we talk about angles also, we have to look at what is shown. So here is any arbitrary angle. There are actually two angles being demonstrated here. The first is the interior angle. This is the angle measurement that is the smallest, and we'll get to talk about how to measure angles here in a moment. But we also have, in the same diagram, this angle that sits on the outside, that moves in the opposite direction, and that is called the exterior angle. Now the interior and exterior angles together will add up to be 360 degrees, but mostly when we're talking about angles, we are looking at the interior angle measurement only. So let's start talking about measuring angles. We will begin with the protractor postulate, which is postulate 1-7. The protractor postulate states, consider ray AB. No, sorry, OB. So we have O and B. And a point A that is on one side or the other of OB, that line. Every ray of the form OA can be paired with a real number from 0 to 180. And the reason for this is that we look at the interior angle, and as we work, we could take a protractor, we place the centering point here at the hinge spot. We lay the positive line along the base, and then we look to see where the other ray comes out. In this case, ray OA comes out here. There are two numbers associated with this location. The inner track starts small on the right and moves 
large on the left. The outer track starts small on the left and moves larger on the right. Since we are starting our measurement along the right side, we will be reading the inside track. And it looks here as if the measurement of angle BOA, and this is how you denote it, M, the angle marker, that means the measurement of, angle BOA is equal to approximately, looks like 53 degrees. So as we go through and make different angles, or have to measure them, this is the process that is involved. If our angle comes out here and here, what we would do is we'd take our protractor, sorry, I grabbed the wrong item there, take our protractor, set it at that point, and then we would need to rotate it in such a way that we match that opening ray and then read what comes out from it. So this would have a measurement of about 70 degrees. Now there are four main types of angles. The first main type of angle is an acute angle. Now an acute angle is between 0 and just up to 90 degrees, but not 90 itself. The second is a right angle. A right angle is strictly 90 degrees. Third comes an obtuse angle. Now an obtuse angle is from 90 to 180 without including those endpoints. Because 180 degrees is called a straight angle. And these four types make up everything that we have. Once we get beyond 180, we're looking at the exterior angle instead of the interior for general angles. So with these measurements and different types, what else can we come up with? Talking about congruence. Two angles are said to be congruent if they have the same measurement. So if I were to pick an arbitrary angle set here, A, B, and C, if the measure of angle AOB is equal to the measure of angle BOC, then angle AOB is said to be congruent to angle BOC. And when we have congruence of angles, there are a number of things that we would be able to do with this, solving for unknown values, looking at parts that are missing, and finding certain pairings of angles that become very important in our study of geometry, and those will be coming up in a future lesson. So when we have angles, and we start talking about congruence and pairing and putting angles together, we need to talk about our ability to add them. So let's look at postulate 1.8, which is the angle addition postulate. This states, if point B is on the interior of angle AOC, then the measure of AOB, measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC is equal to the measure of angle AOC. So if we take a line put in the middle or a ray put in the middle, it will break it up, but the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. This angle plus this angle equals the entire angle. So let's solve this equation based on that postulate. So the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle A, uh, BOC equals the measure of angle AOC. So measure of angle AOB is 2x plus 5. And the measure of angle BOC 
is equal to 6x minus 13. And the measure of the entire angle is 24 degrees. So let's solve this by starting by combining like terms. We can take the 2x and the 6x and put them together to give us 8x. The positive 5 and negative 13 will give us a negative 8. And that is equal to 24 degrees. So add 8 to each side. That gives us two, uh, 8x equals 32. Dividing by 8, we come out with x equals 4. Now taking that information and putting it out here, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5 is equal to 13 degrees. Then, 6 times 4 is 24. 24 minus 13 is 11 degrees. Now, as we looked at this picture originally, it looked like angle AOB was a lot larger than angle BOC. Here we see it's only a little. Also, it looks like angle AOC is much over 45 degrees. Which brings up a good point with geometry is you can't always go by appearance. If there are markings, measurements, instruction given, you need to be marking and following those rather than the actual visual representation. When we talk about congruence also, one thing that needs to be mentioned is if I have an angle, say I have an angle here, and I have an angle bisector. Now remember, a bisector means cut into two equal portions. In order to denote that these angles are congruent, I put arcs. Anything with a single arc is going to have that same angle measurement in that diagram. So you'll need to follow through. If you have different angles that are congruent to each other, you'd put a double arc. If you start running out of room for those, normally you don't go above three. You can put a little mark, a hash mark on the arc to show congruence. So review this, angle measurements, and be ready to use your protractor as we move forward.